I'm Sabrina McElroy, and I am principal at Highland Turner Elementary School, and we're a very small rural school, so when we talked about um, the opportunity to have one of the ACT um, transformation grants, um, we thought about what we wanted to do, what um, we wanted our school to see, how to grow, and how everybody could learn from the process. So I have two of my teachers here today. Miss Karen McIntosh is my third grade teacher, and Michelle Salyer, she's our speech pathologist. And you will see as we go through our presentation that being so small, um, everybody in our school plays a very important and crucial role, and we all grow together. Um, so I don't know, we're switching gears a little bit, so before I start talking, I want you to give all of our presenters before us a hand because they were individual for their school and their classroom, and they all did a fabulous job. So give them one more round of applause real quickly. So when we started talking about the ACT, um, Activating Catalytic Transformation, we had to choose what was called a problem of practice. So we took that all the way through the cycle, and it was an ongoing process, and we're continuing to grow and learn. Are we clicking, not working? Right side. Okay. So our problem of practice basically was developing our PLC process, making it a little bit more um, informative for our teachers and not really being a waste of time. So my teachers are willing to stay, they're willing to put in the time, our students are willing to work and put in the time, so we wanted to get everything that we could out of it. So basically our, our focus topics included our cooperative learning, our continuous use of our classroom improvement strategies, our self-reflection for both our students and our teachers, our growth plans using micro-credentials, and continuous work for our curriculum and assessments. So how have we grown as a school? Our teachers have grown through professional learning, through our PLC process for school and district, our continuous use of classroom improvement strategies, self-reflections, continuous work with our science and math curriculum, and our growth plans using our micro-credentials. So our students have grown with an increase in student engagement, use of common toolbox for their cooperative strategies, differentiated learning for all, our small group and our RTI groups, um, our self-reflections for students, and self-motivation through their goal tracking. So I'm going to let Michelle tell you a little bit about our past, and then we'll let Miss Karen talk a little bit. Okay, in the past, each grade has their own language. So in the past, if you were teaching problem solving, you as a teacher would come up with how you wanted the, the class to do problem solving. So, or if you were teaching them a strategy through um, any process, you would have your own language. So when they went to, from kindergarten to first grade, then that language would change. So that's where we were. Each classroom and school had their own curriculum and assessments. There was no base for if, you change, if your child changed schools to another county school, you might be in the same book, you might not. You might be in the same chapter or the same unit or you may not. So, and that um, went to the RTI process. At the beginning, we didn't even know what RTI meant, what we were supposed to do. We just kind of thought, well, we ha we'll pull these groups and see if that works. Low student engagement in the classroom. You would have not everyone engaged at all times. Sometimes the students would be just dream daydreaming or wouldn't be on task, while other students would be. Because part of it was the learning levels and the learning um, motivations. School culture was different. It was more vertical. It was what can my, I do for my classroom, not how I can help the next grade level. Let's get these students, I'm worried about my students, you worry about your students. You know, we're not more of a central class. And then the lack of knowledge in the PLC process. We weren't together on our PLCs. Each teacher kind of did their own thing. The upper grades got together sometimes and said, what are you doing? Special Ed got together in the mornings right before, you know, we were on duty. Okay, let's talk about Jimmy. Do you have Jimmy? I have Jimmy. All right, he's not doing this, this, and this. As quickly as you can, all right, run back and get on duty. 
So that's where we were. <laughs> that's odd. Now our presence. Our, sta our school is more, has a common language. Every classroom used the exact same wording and vocabulary to use for problem solving and for our guided reading. So kindergarten uses the same thing as sixth grade. They talk the same exact language. And that way, when they're moving on, they can't say, well, Miss Paula said we do it this way. No, nope, Miss Paula said you do it exactly the way I do it. That way it's easier and you don't have to reteach language. As a district, now we have a common curriculum. Every month, our schools get together and we go over the curriculum and units and see where everybody's at. That way, if your child moves a school, they are still in the same area. As a school, we follow a school-wide teaching model. Everyone uh, gets together on Thursdays. We rotate groups and we know where every student is and what they're doing for their lessons. We also have a school-wide RTI process. At 2, 4, 2, 10, 2, 15 each day, we break up in two groups. The special... Oh, the special education teachers go in and the regular education teachers pull their tiers. They go to different classrooms. We do RTI processes like that. And then we understand our tiers so much better. Our present. We've incorporated some common cooperative strategies because student engagement um, was so lacking in some of our classes that we decided if we could get them motivated and we could get them engaged, then they were going to learn more of the curriculum. So we have common cooperative strategies that we utilize weekly and we mo I monitor those for um, greater student engagement. So when I go in as the administrator, I'm looking for specific strategies for the month as well as those that we have worked on prior for each month. Um, through our PDSA process, our teachers and students understand their, the impact that each teacher and student have on student growth. Um, as Michelle said a few minutes ago, the vertical, um, a lot of times when I started, I've been there for three and a half years, um, when I started, our primary were kind of in their own island because they were like, oh, well, we're not accountable. we got to get these kids to read. It doesn't really matter. I've got to get them to read. Um, so when we started getting together and we talked, well, yeah, we're all accountable because those third grade scores are everybody up to this point. So we've, we have started working from preschool to get our students where they need to be. So when they take K-PREP, there's no um, surprises. Our kids are ready. So they're performing at the level where they need to be. Um, so what we put together at the end. Um, I couldn't bring all my teachers today. I would have loved to bring all of my teachers today to let um, some of them talk to you about our process. Michelle stole my story. I was going to tell the one about um, my first year. I walked in and we have four teachers standing here in the lobby and kids all around them and parents and they have their notebook out. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? And they said, we're having our um, PLC. And I said, what? They said, well, we're doing our PLC. I said, well, what are you all doing? Well, we don't know. We were told we had to do them. So this is our PLC meeting. I was like, well, is this effective? No, not really. I said, oh, okay, well, that's good to know at least. Um, so immediately I thought we have to do something um, in order for my teachers to grow, to be able to share those things across grade levels um, so that we have our students where they need to be. So we have a, just a few short clips of videos. We have some teachers and some students talking about um, how our processes have changed and how they work for the better. So I'm going to, we may have to hold the microphone here, so we'll see if we can get it. Since using the Marzano strategies, all of the students are completely engaged. They have to think on their own, and they um, are writing their own thoughts, and they can't copy off of somebody else. So they're really good. That is our kindergarten teacher, and she's talking about engagement and how now they're all engaged. She doesn't have any... My teacher, she, when I started, I said... Um, you know, we, we've got to get away from just the textbook. We have to look at other resources. We can't just use one textbook, especially when we look at curriculum across the district because everybody doesn't have the same resources. So as we built our curriculum, we built our curriculum to be um, not about what resources we're using to teach. 
Here's our standards. Here's what we have. We may have totally different things at our school than the other elementary schools, but how do we get our students to learn the curriculum based on the resources that we have? So Miss Paula was our text, she's my textbook story. I told her, I said, Miss Paula, we have to stop rocking the textbook. It's not working, we gotta stop rocking it. So when I first introduced our cooperative strategy, she was like, oh my gosh, my kindergartners can't do that. And I said, sure they can, let's try it. She introduces it, they do it, she's like, Oh, well, I didn't even have to teach them that strategy. So as they go from kindergarten to first grade to second grade, we're using those same cooperative strategies. So our students and teachers are growing. And when I go in my classroom, all of our students are engaged 100% of the time because of the strategies that we're using school-wide. So it's pretty awesome. Now we have our PLC process refined where we can work vertically. Because if you come and visit my school, you'll see that we only have one teacher per grade level. So we don't get any horizontal alignment at our school. So all of our PLC work basically is the vertical alignment, which is pretty awesome. Because when a group of teachers go in and observe a classroom, for example, if Miss Karen goes in and observes fourth grade, then she sees the value of, oh, well, gosh, I better make sure my kids are where they need to be because when they go here and they're looking at fractions, if I don't teach this and they don't master that, then when they go to fourth grade, they're going to be lost. Um, so we've done a lot of that work um, since I've been there where I take groups of teachers in. They get to actually um, observe other teachers. They get a debriefing section time where I cover their classes. I do a lot of covering myself because I value my teachers and I won't ask them to do anything that I don't do. So if I want them to spend time out of their classroom, I want their time to be valued, so I'll step in and I'll actually do activities with the students. Sometimes I go on Miss Karen's and do an RTI group because we have a, our other persons out on Fridays for another school. So a lot of times I'll go in and lead one of her RTI groups. So if you have the opportunity to come visit us, it's awesome. Um, but Miss Sandy, our sixth grade teacher, was talking about our district PLC, how it's really helped our teachers because they were on their own little island and now they have all the sixth grade teachers in the district once a month to talk to and combined um, their scores, talk about their common assessments. And they have done all that work themselves as a district, so it's pretty awesome. So basically our next steps or our future is building the stronger community and parent support and having a school-wide use of the micro credentials to grow professionally. We have pockets. Everybody haven't completed, hasn't completed those, but that's going to be our next steps. So if you have the opportunity, we're in Breathitt County, a very small school. Come on out and visit us. We'd be glad to have you. Thank you all.